Yes, yes, and amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Being aware that we were in conference all week, that our spirits are full and our bodies are tired. I'm grateful to be able to, what I'm going to consider, finish this off or put a cap on this. That's my agenda today. I want to delve right in because, and worship team, I want to say thank you to you guys, by the way, and to the praise and the worship and what you guys do. Outstanding, amazing, thank you. I never want to take it for granted. Thank you. I think you ought to give them thanks and praise for what they do, how they lead us in. Thank you guys so much. That's the good part. The bad part is I'm going to put a demand on you guys in a little bit, but that's different. <laughs> to stand and do what they did the other night and play and worship and lead us and keep pushing and driving. And, you know, I, I appreciate that they lead us in that. Um, I, you, it's easy to say, well, I don't need nobody to, to praise God. Sure, sure, sure. But it sure helps when you have people that are skilled leading the way. I sound good over there without a microphone singing when, when, when they're singing. I, I, my praise is beautiful. My voice is melodial without a microphone. And that's what I appreciate them for. We're grateful. To all who served, as, as Dr. Buddy said, to all who served and sacrificed and gave behind the scenes, didn't get noticed, didn't get anything other than the satisfaction of giving all that you had to the Lord. We pray it back a hundredfold to you today because you gave so much. What a beautiful, beautiful conference. These things don't happen by accident. Things don't happen. Anything of order, anything of order requires energy. If you leave your lawn and just believe God for it to be beautiful, you're going to have giraffes and zebras coming up out of there in about six months. Anything of order requires energy. And we had such a beautiful, orderly move of the Spirit this week that that was not by accident. It was by a lot of energy and sacrifice. And so to all of you, thank you, who served and gave. We do not take that lightly, truly. And it is such a blessing. It made the way for people to receive so easy. It was so easy to preach, to be in this house, to receive because of that. Everything was done decently and order, orderly, and we are so grateful and thankful for that, truly, to each and every one. Give yourselves a hand clap one more time. Just say God is good. I want to read if I can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump right in. I'm going to try to be economical, as always, because I think it's important. But I want to I get this to us. The question that I'm answering today is, what do we do with this? What, what do we do? How do we maintain and increase and advance from what we just came out of? It's anticlimactic. You have this big pinnacle, this big surge of faith and preaching and teaching. And we're excited and our hearts are filled with faith. How do we keep and maintain and grow that from where we're at? That's, what, that's the question that we have to answer. That's what's important to us. We don't want to go, that was great, and then collapse, and then get back up in the same spot that we were at when we first started. Now, I'm going to preach, even if you don't have any amens left, you might have given them all to, 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 to Dr. Trim. I appreciate it. I gave a lot to, 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 to Apostle uh, Pagani. You might have given them all out, but it's okay. I'm still going to preach and do what I'm going to do today. It's just little old me, you know, just me, just your brother here. But I'm still got, I still got an assignment, and I still got to do what I got to do. So any help that you could lend me in your, in your physical tired status, I would appreciate. Because we got a little something that we got to do to make sure we cap this. I'm going to read out of Exodus chapter 14. I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. I'm so grateful for this house, this place. Exodus 14, 13. Y'all thought I was saying that for some. I, I just love y'all. I just want you to know. Some of y'all were waiting for something to follow that. I just love you. Such amazing, incredible people. I love God's people. I'm getting to know everybody and learning, and I, I, I love it. I love the family of God. I do not take it lightly. I do not take it for granted. I'm so grateful this week just charged us together. You know, when you, when you do things like that together, 
It fuses you together. Did you know that? It, it, it doesn't. That's why people, I have friends in the military that, that I, I was in the trenches with that I'll know for the rest of my I can not talk to them for 20 years. And I could see them, and, and we have a bond because we did something together that was not normal. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Mom loves you no matter what. You know, that's what the Bible's clear about that. No matter what. Exodus 14. Let's read just a little bit here, please. I want to read a little bit, and then I want to talk, and, and I really want to get something done today. Exodus 14, starting in verse 13. Now, let me just kind of give that. Most of us are familiar with this story. This is the children of Israel being delivered out of Egyptian bondage. And they had been in bondage for 400 years. They're, they're coming out. God has delivered them out of that bondage. And they're, they're now on their way out. They've, they've had miracles, signs, wonders. And they're standing in this place uh, with the Red Sea. They've got mountains over here. They've got a garrison over here. They've got the, the army of Pharaoh behind them. And they've got this Red Sea. And so they're in a conundrum. And they've just come out of miracles. They just, they just came out of a miracle. God just delivered them out of, out of Egyptian bondage. And so here they are standing in this place. They just had an economic miracle. They just went from poverty to riches. The Egyptians are throwing their stuff on them. And so they're standing in this place. And we pick it up in chapter 14, verse 13, where it says, And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Verse 14, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Verse 15, and the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. We're going to go back and pick some of this up in a minute. Verse 31, if you're following along, verse 31, Exodus 14, verse 31. Good. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt, so the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Chapter 15, verse 1. Then. Everybody say then. then. Say it again. Then. One more time. Then. then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider has he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He's my God. I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is wonderful. And then I'm going to pop over here to Psalm 137. Psalm 137. The children of Israel are once again in bondage. This time, they're in Babylonian bondage. They're longing for what God can do for deliverance. And verse, Psalm 137, verse number 4, he said, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem... Above my chief joy. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Let's pray. Father, I thank you today that you do something magnanimous. Do something big today. Because you're a big God and our faith is big. Our expectation is great. We've had a wonderful week. We've heard so many words and promises, decrees. And we thank you, Lord, that you're doing incredible things in our lives, that you're elevating every life, every person this morning is being elevated in God to a new place and status. We thank you for it. We praise you and exalt you. We decree you are good and true, and every word that you speak is coming to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The psalmist said in writing 137, they're in this bondage and please walk with me just for a few minutes because this is very important that we get this he said how can we praise God in a foreign land in other words he was saying how can I praise God for something that I haven't yet seen him do 
How can I praise God where I haven't seen him yet work? I can praise him for what I knew he's done in the past. I can praise him that he's delivered us and our history. The historical narrative of my people is that God always delivers us when we get in trouble and when we rebel and when we don't obey, God is good and true and faithful. And I can praise him for that. I can praise him for what he's done. But how can I praise him for something I've never seen him do yet? They had lost their ability of faith to believe God for things yet to come. They had had a repetitive pattern so long of being in church, I mean the wilderness, that they, they forgot how to praise God for what they haven't seen Him do. And it's not difficult to get to a place, believe it or not, in our lives where we are in this repetitive action of praising God for what he has done. Nothing wrong with that. That's great. I can praise God for what he did yesterday. I can praise God that he saved me. And I always do and I always will. And I can praise God for the salvation that he's brought to me and my family. The blessing, the wealth, the health, the goodness, the mercy, the grace. God's done so many things. He saved me. He set me on solid ground. He put me in my right mind. He saved me from the snare of the enemy. And I praise God for it. But it's easy to get into a place where we praise God for what he has done. And the children of Israel had found themselves in bondage. And here's what's amazing about this story. It was the enemy who said, I want to see you praise God for something he hasn't done yet. I know you know how to praise him on your history. That's easy. Listen to me. It does not take faith to praise God for what he has done. It just takes a good memory. It takes faith to praise God for what he said he will do and take him at his word. I know where I'm going this morning. We've been strengthened. We've been reproofed, encouraged, rebuked, corrected, admonished, edified, delivered, activated. We've laughed. We've cried. We've yelled. We've screamed. We've sang. We've danced. We've marched. We proclaimed all week long. We've received revelation, direction, and insight. We were given promises and decrees. What do you do with all this? What do we do with all this? We do not want to lose what God gives us. It's easy to sit in a conference and go, man, that's great faith. That's wonderful. It's a place of incredible faith. God's doing great things. And then we step up and what do we do? I submit to you that the, that, that the, the answer is praise. The answer is praise. I don't want to lose what I gained this week. I'm not going to ask you. I'm not even going to make the statement. I don't know about you because I do know about you. I was here. You went up. I watched you go up. We went up. We went something happened. We went up because that's what we expected. That was our proclamation. That was the decree that God gave us. Arise and advance. So we arose and we are advancing. So I don't need to ask you. I don't need to say I don't know about you. I went up. I know about us. We went up. But we've got, to, we've got to then ask the question, how do we maintain and grow this? I submit to you, it's praise. I'm not going to distinguish today just by way of understanding the difference between praise and worship. I'm not going to. I'm going to use them synonymously together today to make the point of what I'm really talking about is exalting and thanking God in faith. I'm not going to talk about praise being fast and worship being slow. And I'm talking about praise and worship, exalting God, thanking Him yes. in faith. Yes. Amen. I want to distinguish between that. What I want to distinguish between is the works of what He has done and the word of what He said He will do. Yes. We receive some very definitive and directive words. And our danger is, is that we sit and wait for God to do what the prophets and the apostles and the pastors and the teachers and the evangelists declared that God was going to do. 
becomes easy to go, that's good, God, I'm waiting on it. And I'm praising you for what you have done. And I'm thankful for what you did last time, God. But the question is, can I praise him in faith for what I have not yet seen manifest in my life? Can I maintain my faith? Life Center, we're not just going to be a church that praises God for what he has done. That's important. I'm not diminishing our praise for what God has done in our life. We never lose that. You can never lose that. It's imperative that you praise God, that you're thankful, that you're grateful. It's what maintains and keeps your faith. But that's a level of praise. But there is another level of praise that when God says, I'm going to do this, that you say, I believe you, God. I believe your word is true. Therefore, I'm going to act in faith and praise you like it's already done. That means, watch, because I'm not going to preach anything new to you, your church people. You've heard it all, just like me. you heard every message ever been preached. Just got to find a different way. Happy about that. But I will not release this microphone, and I will not leave the stage, and I will not unlock the doors until we get this. And that is, we have a new song to sing in this house. There is a new praise yet to arise. Our praise has been good. It has been amazing. But God has made some bold decrees and statements over this house through the prophets and the apostles. Therefore, we are now at a place where we have to decree, God, I'm going to praise you because I believe they're already done. I don't have to see the manifestation of my healing. I don't have to see the manifestation of the book I'm going to write. I don't have to be, see the manifestation of the song I'm going to write or the business I'm going to start. I'm going to praise you today like I'm already in it. All right, hold on, sit down, sit down. Not yet, not yet. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. We've, we've got to distinguish and help ourselves understand that it becomes easy to go, God, I'm grateful, I'm thankful, you've been good. And again, I'm not diminishing. That's important. It's just that I'm focusing on where we're at and where we're going. How do, we, how do we maintain when God gives us a word? I'm sure you can attest, I've watched too many people get a good word. A decree, a proclamation, a prophecy from God. And get excited and never see it come to pass. What's our part? We ain't got to worry about God's part. I don't, I don't need to preach on that today. God's part's good. What's our part? The children of Israel were hours, hours. It took 40 hours approximately to deliver the nation of Israel from bondage of slavery, from the Egyptian hand. They were hours from God delivering them out of the hand of Pharaoh an economic miracle where the plunder is being thrown upon them and they're walking out carrying all the gold and the silver of the Egyptians and God has just done a miracle and they come right off the mountaintop into the valley. They came from the conference to the Monday work day. How about that right there? And the same devils that were there are still here waiting on me. And they said, uh, uh, Moses, we got a problem. And Moses said, listen, guys, God's going to deliver us. Do not be afraid. I'm going to read it verbatim. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more. Ever, 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 ever again. Thank you. 
And they said, uh, uh, Moses, the, 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 Pharaoh, the army of Pharaoh is behind us. There's a garrison over here on that side to block him that he set up. He sent 600 of his premium chariots and then it, all, all the other chariots. So there was, we don't know how many thousand plus chariots coming. There's a mountain over here. And there's a problem in front of me that I can't solve. What are we going to do, Moses? We just saw God move. L listen to me. I don't want any cute phrases today. Listen to me. Hopelessness is, is, is the most powerful on the heels of hope. Hopelessness is the most powerful on the heels of hope. In other words, from the mountaintop to the valley is where things are the most challenging. You come out of this high expectation, this high faith, and the next thing you know, you're sitting at a place where you can't see a passable way through. And hopelessness is most powerful on the heels of hope. You just saw God move. You just saw God do a miracle. You just saw him speak to you. You just saw a proclamation. You just got delivered. You just got a word. You just got a prophecy. You just got the movement of God. And the next thing you know, the enemy says, look, you're surrounded. What are you going to do now? So loud was the cry of the people. So strong was their doubt that Moses began to cry out. God, what are you going to do? Verse number 15, and the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Because the voice of the people started getting stronger than the voice of God. We started believing the clamoring. Yeah, but you don't know my situation. You don't understand. Look at what we're dealing with here. There's no way out. There's no way around this. Verse 31, thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord did. God went ahead and did it anyway. Did it in spite. Watch, I got to get through this quickly. God said, I'm going to do it anyway. So he did what he promised. Chapter 15, verse 1 of Exodus. After God delivered them, the first word, the first word is a very, very sad word. Then. Then. Then they decided they would praise God and sing their song. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. God delivered in spite of the lack of faith, the doubt, the murmuring. That's God's goodness. He said, I'm going to deliver you guys. Watch. I just did it. I'm going to deliver you. How's God going to deliver us? Moses, it ain't going to happen. Oh, my goodness. What's going on? I got to find some people to tell this about. I got to find some people to talk to. I got to get an agreement over this disagreement that I have. God said, I'm going to deliver you anyway. Then, then Moses and the people of Israel sang God's praise. Right song, wrong place. I'm not trying to be cute. Listen to me. It's easy to praise God after he does the miracle. It's, it's imperative that we do praise him. And that we never stop praising him. And listen, I've had plenty of those. This isn't an indictment. I'm like, like, like if I was there, I would, if I was there, I'd have been murmuring right there with them going, Moses, what are you going to do? Had I been Moses, I'd have been like, yeah, God, what are you going to do? These people, what are we, we going to do? So don't get me wrong. But we learn. We grow by faith. We want to do better. We want to advance. So they sang the praises of God. They just sang them on the wrong side. They should have sang it on that side. They were in the wrong place. The moment that God said, I'm going to deliver you from the Egyptian hand, they should have said, hey, yeah, come on, Jesus, and started praising God. That's faith. That's the level of faith the Life Center is going to operate in. I'm not going to wait 
until God delivers everything he promised to me and I'm on the other side safe and dry from the Egyptian army before I begin to praise God. I decided I'm going to go ahead and praise him for every word that was spoken, for every truth that came across. I'm going to praise him like it's already here. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, hang on, hang on, sit down, sit down, sit down. Not yet, not yet. Hold it just for a minute. <laughs> Wait, watch this, watch this. I, I, I got to get this in us, and then we're going to praise a little bit. That's how we're going to go out today. You got anything you believe in God for? Now listen, I should have done this in the first place to be fair. If you're here and you're not believing God for anything, and like, you know, I, I got everything and I'm not believing God, I'm all set, I'm good, you might as well just head on to the chicken house now because <laughs> go get your waffle before us. There's no reason for me to keep you and hold you. And that's okay, I'm not mad at you. I, I'm just pleased to the people that, that say I'm believing God for this word yeah. to advance. Of course, I'm being facetious because we're all believing God for an advancement. So they, they wait. In fact, what they do is they start singing the same old song that they've been singing. It's called the Egyptian blues. I'm going back to the Egyptian land. I'm going to eat leeks and I'm going to work for the man. Come on. I told y'all I can't sing. Don't look surprised. It's the best you're going to get. Started singing the same old song they were used to. The Egyptian blues. If only we could go back, it was better. It was better. Remember when? Why I got to go through this, God? It, it was better back over here. I thought you were just going to airlift me over to the promised land. I didn't have to walk through none of this. God said, no, 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 my promise is true. But for you to ascertain my promise, you've got you've to increase your faith. You've got to build your faith. So if I airlift you over there and drop you up, you're not going to be able to manage the very miracle that you've been praying for. And you'll lose it because you're not able to maintain it because you'll think that you got it by something that you did rather than by what I did. And it's easy to sing the same old song that we're comfortable with because it comforts us. We want to go back and get some leeks and some onions. And you, you should have just dug grave. We could have had graves out. In, at least we would have died in a grave in Egypt. You got us out here in the desert. And it, does not, it does not take faith to praise God for what he's done. That's thankfulness. That's gratefulness. You should exercise that at all times. That takes a good memory. You've got to recall, God, this is, this is what you've done, and I'm grateful. But when God gives you a word, when we have a proclamation, when we make decrees, it's at that point that you have to make a decision. Do I go back to the Egyptian blues? Keep having the same talk, the same song? Keep humming the same little praise I got? Or am I going to step it up and go, I'm going to praise you. Like I've already got the manifestation of what you said. That's the faith God wants his people in. Here's the problem. If, if we don't do that, this is, this is, man, need help, Lord. This, is, this has been our challenge in the church is we're good at praising God for what he's done. That doesn't mean we don't go, thank you, Lord, you're doing great things. But when God gives you a word, you got to camp on that word and you got to praise God like that word has already come to pass. Because to God, it has. And it's the language that God wants to hear from you, a language of faith. I don't have to see it manifest. I'm not going to wait for it to manifest. I know it's going to manifest. I'm going to praise him like it's here. The children of Israel got on the other side and sang that beautiful praise song. 
Just watch, because I'm showing you the pattern that we can get into. Three days later, they end up at Marah, where there were bitter waters. What did they do? <laughs> Egyptian blues, we're going back. Same old song, same old doubt. Well, you know, at least God provided for us over there. God gave us leaks. God did it then, but he can't do it again. He can't do a new work. He can't do something that big. He'd never be able to move in this. There's no way the economy's too tight. Things don't look good. Let's go back to where I'm comfortable and sing the same old Egyptian blues. We could go through the entire Bible. For sake of time, I won't. They get to the end of the 40 years. Watch. Because most historians believe that it was about 40 hours that it took God to deliver them all the way across to the Red Sea. So it took 40 hours for God to walk the Israelites out of Egypt. But it took 40 years to walk Egypt out up out of the Israelites. God can deliver us in a moment's time. In a moment's notice, God can give you a word and deliver you. The question then is, how long is it going to take to walk out that doubt and unbelief that God said it, he meant it, it's going to come to pass? I apologize for preaching this radical, and I'm sorry. I should have had a nice sermonette for Christianette today, and I humbly apologize, but since I don't, let's go on. Years later, the promised land is before them. They're getting ready to go over. God's walked them. He's thinking, man, okay, now you guys are ready. You've watched me do miracle after miracle in spite of you singing the same old song. And you always sing it on the wrong side. You're always in the wrong place when you're singing this praise. This is a praise of faith that belongs over there where I decreed it and told you but you always make me manifest it before you praise me. So now they're at the Jordan, and what do they do? Pull that harmonica. Oh, wow, 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 wow. The Egyptian blues. Back we go. Well, I know God did it. And sometimes it's a, it's a default statement that we, well, I know God can do it. I, I know he did it before and he can. That didn't sound very faith-filled. Yeah, but, but, but what, if, what, if, what if God doesn't do it? What if I got it wrong? I don't know. That would be terrible for you to praise God in faith, wouldn't it? That, that, that wouldn't. What, what do we have to lose? Let me tell you what we have to gain. A new level of faith-filled walk with God, and that's what he wants. That's what he's after. No matter where we sit, he said, I want a new level with you. If I decreed it and I promised it, I want you to proclaim it and praise me and thank me like it's done. The children of Israel did this for 40 years because when you get in a cycle of re going back to the same old praise, the same old statements, the same old habits, the same Egyptian mentality, you don't know how to praise God and believe him to put your praise in front. Can I say it this way? You have got to learn to praise God on the proclamation. Not just the manifestation. You have got... If we don't learn... That when God gives a decree, we take that thing and hold it. It's too easy to go, that's good, that's good, that's good right now. I'm believing God, I'm believing God. Why are you believing God? That should, that should be done. I believe it's done, it's over, it's finished. God said it. What, what else is there to do? I stand in this place and I decree that it's done. The hall of faith, what made the hall of faith? Wasn't purity, wasn't perfection. It was that they were still believing God, even though they had not seen the manifestation. 
they had the proclamation. And on the proclamation, you get into the hall of faith by going, I'm believing God on the proclamation. He said it was going to come to pass. Yeah, but the circumstances. Don't talk to me about the circumstances. I'm not worried about the circumstances. I'm worried about the promises of God, which are yes and amen. And therefore, I'm going to praise God like it's manifest. And when you praise God on the proclamation that this is what God put over my life, things begin to happen. Things begin to shift. If we don't learn to get our praise out in, in, in front, I know we do. I know we know this church. I know this isn't new. But we get, we get too easily comfortable with, yeah, God, I, I'm, I'm believing that. Our praise is what, what institutes our faith into action. It's, 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 it's what makes things happen. And we've got to learn to put our praise in advance. We've got to learn to sing the right song in the right place. I don't want to sing it when he's done. We just went through a faith-filled week. God moved mightily. We were delivered, saved, set free, had proclamations, promises. Many of us got words. What do we do with those? Do we sit and wait and just go, I know God's good. He's done it in the past. Or do we go, I believe this. I'm going to walk in this. I'm, go I'm going to walk straight towards the sea. And if it doesn't open up and God doesn't do what he says, then I guess I'm just going to go for a good little swim. But I'm not going to stop praising him. And I'm not going to sing the Egyptian blues. And I'm not going to go back to yesterday's song. I'm grateful for it. And I praise God for what he has done. But I am praising him for what he's going to do. And my faith is in place. Mario, will you come out? Can I get the praise team out? I don't know if they're even here. They might have left and went home and be in a nap by now. They, they're, they worked hard. I know we're tired. Because it's physically a lot. It's demanding. I know. It's a lot. There, there, it really is. But I want to go out with praise. That's, that's my sermon. That was my intro. You know my sermons are the shortest. You know, they're very short. That's my intro. That's my intro. That's my intro. Just to remind us. The sermon is we're going to go out praising God today. I want to go out praising God for what he's doing. We're not going to wait. I'm not going to praise him with some little... Kindergarten praise. Oh, I think it, I'm going to praise him like he delivered my family. I'm going to praise him like he restored my wealth and is bringing wealth. I'm going to praise him like the money's in my bank account. I'm going to praise him like the book's already written. I'm going to praise him like I'm healed in my body. I'm not going to wait for a manifestation. I'm going to praise him like my marriage is restored. I'm going to praise him like that job I've been waiting on is here. I'm going to praise him like the promotion is here. I'm going to praise him. And the way that I praise him, the way I praise him today, you're going to think I got it. You might, you, you, you might, well, he must have already got that. He must have already got, my, my God must have already done it for him. Because the way he's praising, ain't no Egyptian blues. I'm not going to wait for the manifestation. The proclamation is the manifestation. The proclamation is the manifestation. If God proclaimed it, it's already manifest. My praise will draw it down to heaven as I begin to walk in faith. Y'all get a praise song ready because we're going to get ready to praise in this place. I don't want to sing a song. I don't want to sing a song. <laughs> oh, it's about to get up in here. You better make some room. You better make some room. This is how we're going out. This is how we're going out. Excuse me, just a sec. Yeah. Come on.
We're gonna get a little praise on him. I don't want you to praise him like you praise him for something back there. It's gonna manifest. Look at my healing. Look at my blessing. completely undignified and out of but while we're here you know the story of Jehoshaphat facing an insurmountable insurmountable unbeatable enemy odds that could not be beat no way you're getting past that I just want to I just thought of this I just want to read this with it prophet comes to him and says you won't need to fight in the battle. Position yourselves, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now that doesn't mean don't move. That means you do your part, be still in your stuff, let God do his. That's a different message. Verse 21, King Jehoshaphat consulted 
with the people appointed those who should sing to the Lord, who should praise, and the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. I know you know this. I know you know this. I know you know this. But a rightly fit word. He said, put your praise out front. Get them out front. Now, when they begin to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambush. The word ambush means a predestined manifestation. So over here, God said, I proclaim the enemy that's about to try to overtake you and coming against you cannot stand. And Jehoshaphat said, fair enough. I'm going to praise you like it is. I'm going to put my praise out front. I'm not going to fight this battle. I'm not going to try to do it in my intellect. I'm not going to battle the enemy. I'm just going to put my praise. And when they begin to praise, the manifest word of the Lord begin to come up and overtake the enemy. It was already done. All we got to do is praise him, church.
just activated the miracle of God that he has proclaimed over your life. You just activated it. You just set it in motion. No devil in hell, no circumstance, no knowledge can stop what God is doing. All you got to do is keep praising him and thanking him. There ain't nothing wrong with my memory. I'm grateful for what he's done. But I'm putting my praise in advance. Life Center, we're singing a new song. We're decreeing new decrees. God is going to do everything he said he's going to do, and we believe him for every word of it. It's coming to pass. Give him one last shout of praise. Elder Judy, you have not yet seen what God's going to do in your life. You have seen some stuff. Nothing wrong with your memory. God has been good to you and your family. You are a foundation in this church and this ministry. But God said that was training. All that was was me walking you up to the Red Sea. Now starts the good stuff. You're not even close to done. You're not going to be somebody that just sits around and tells about what God has done. You're not going to be the one that sits people around and says, well, you know God used to do this. You're going to walk it out before people. They're going to watch you walk across the Red Sea on dry ground and say, how is she doing it? My praise is already, I praise God on this side. I'm not going to wait till I get to the other side. I prophesied to our spiritual parents that they are nowhere near done. I love, I, I, I'm going to steal this from Dr. Trim because I love it. That's suspicious praise right there. That's suspect. That's suspect. That didn't sound like it had anything on it. Let me, let me prophesy to us first. We all want mom and dad crumb to be here because we love them. That's our emotion, so it's easy to get in agreement with. But I'm not talking to your emotion because I'm not going to let my emotion stop what God has done, one way or the other. So I'm not talking to our emotion. I'm talking about to the promise. My promise was I will come to the Life Center I don't want the ministry and the stuff. I want what they have. Don't misunderstand me. I didn't come here. I love the church. But I didn't need a church. I needed an anointing. I needed a mantle. I came for the mantle that lies upon them. You need to know why I'm here. So I begin to praise God before my journey even started. That's what the Lord says. Long and fruitful, very productive, many years yet left. Much anointing, much residue, much to be done. They're not on the way down, they're on the way up. We need to squeeze the rest of the anointing in what God has. Many years, longevity, many sermons left to be preached many prophecies to be prophesied many people to be activated mom we're not going down we're going up we're not going to praise God over here where he said it and then act like we don't believe it we're going to praise him over here we're not going to wait to get over there I don't want to get 10 years down the road and go I praise you God I'm going to praise you right here today God's going to do what he said he's going to do he's faithful Yes, Lord. Mom and Dad, I prophesy there are many yet sons and daughters. Many more sons and daughters to come forward. There are many people to be mentored in the apostolic and the prophetic. 
that God said what used to be laborsome now like Peter as you walk by the anointing the shadow that I put on you will fall then it will be so easy you won't know that it's happening you'll say it and it'll change it'll shift you won't have to teach like you used to have to teach they've been taught you taught them now your anointing as you walk as you talk that anointing that shadow of what has been done and God is doing will meet in a place where there will be manifestations that you have dreamed and hoped and prayed for, says the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Every dream, vision, purpose, plan that God has spoken to you, that you've held on to, that you know is from God, you praise Him. You don't get talked out of it. I don't care if you go on the job tomorrow and you say, I'm going in for promotion and they fire you. You say, well, praise God. He's got a better job for me. It's somewhere else. You don't look at the circumstance. You don't watch the, the, the river. You watch God. And you praise God based on the word that he has given us. Life Center, we're going up, we're going up, we're going up, and we're going to advance. We're going to advance. Not just me, not just you, all of us. Everyone's going forward. Everyone's going forward in Jesus' name. Come on, one last praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We praise you and exalt you in this place. Hallelujah. You are good and true and perfect in all your ways. I prophesy not that you won't have challenges not that there won't be strongholds and devils that we face I prophesy that our faith our faith will be present present faith right here that when God proclaims a word to us as a church as a people when God proclaims a word to us that our praise will advance before the manifestation and God will be well pleased that we believed him for it at the proclamation and the, and the manifestation is just the celebration of what we already knew happened because we are a people of faith. Praise in advance. I want our language. I want our language to change. I want us to hold each other accountable. Praise God for what he's done. Praise God he saved me and delivered me. Amen. I praise God with you. What's he doing? Where are you going? What's he saying? The Lord said I was getting a new job. Praise God you got a new job then. Let's go shopping. He said, I'm speaking to the nations. Let's get that passport updated. I ain't got to wait. I ain't got to wait. I ain't got to wait. I'm going to give. I'm going to sow. I'm going to speak. I'm going to walk. I'm going to talk. I'm going to praise. And it may look a little undignified. Don't care. He said, I don't know about that praise. Don't worry. It ain't for you. Our praise ain't for you. It ain't for other people. It's for him. This kind of praise right here is forward praise. I might praise with you say, yeah, yeah, thank God. But this praise is forward. This, for, this right here is between me and God. 
that I believe for the manifestation. And corporately, corporately, that's what the world wants. That's what the world, I, I'm done. That's what the world wants. Sing a praise about what God's going to do. Oh, we can't. We don't know how to do that anymore. They were in captivity and bondage. And the enemy said, sing, sing a song of God in a foreign land, in a place you hadn't seen God move before. Well, I can't. I, I can only do it in church where I'm familiar with people that I know. God said, no, 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 no. The world is waiting for you to sing your praise on the job. You ain't got to physically sing. You can, you can manifest out of yourself praise that gives an answer. That's what the world, world isn't waiting on us to fix the political system or the government or to get it right or to get an agreement and unity on a political party or an economic status or money to come back or money to flow out. They're waiting on us to get an agreement in faith that we said, God said it and I believe it and I'm going to walk like I believe it. I'm going to live like it's here. I don't have to wait for it to get here. Well, 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 you know, they, they said I was going to be in ministry one day, so I'm going to act like one day I'm going to be. You're in ministry today, right now. You are in ministry. I ordain you in the ministry in Jesus' name. Done. Walk it, walk it, walk it, walk it. That's what God. All right, I got to get this off of me. Y'all go back to your seat. Let me pray over you again here in a minute. Oh, bless his name. we do you know there's times in the Bible that the word for humility is interchanged with worship they're interchangeable you don't have to try to be humble I'm going to help keep him humble he's a humble man you know how you can tell a humble person they worship God that's a humble person you want to know if your humility is in check you can't worship God you're not humble you're proud you're stiff necked you can't bow your heart before God. You can't praise Him and worship Him. You can't prostrate your life before Him and say, God, you are worthy. That's how you get cloaked in humility. We don't want to be a proud people of what we're doing. We want to be a people cloaked in humility that know how to worship God on His word in faith. I don't... I'm trying to quit. It's a problem when you preach, I just you got too much in you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to quit. Our job, our job is, to, is to elevate people's life in Christ. You, you do that, there, there are not enough buildings in America to hold people that want to hear from God. You teach them to hear from God, you elevate their life. And if we live a life, could you imagine if one person had stepped out from that group of people and just said, all right, God said, I'm a 16 year old lady. Y'all do what you want. I'm going to go over here and walk towards the Red Sea. And just started praising God. I don't want to wait for the manifestation. Stand with me one more time, if you would, please. Thank you for being so gracious. I mean, it's not like I could do anything else. I didn't have anything else I could do. But I appreciate you being attentive. It's been a long week physically. I pray the spirit of a nap land on you today. <laughs> now listen. I, I, I don't know all my anointings and stuff, but I know I got that one. I got the spirit of a nap anointing. I know because it manifests in my life. And I do pray rest. Because you can be in motion and at rest. That's, that's what the Sabbath rest is. It's not being still. It's that even while you're in motion, there's a rest. That's, that's what, that's, that was the blessing of the Sabbath rest. You can rest seven days a week and be tired. You can go to bed and wake up tired. The blessing of rest is that though I worked hard this week, we stayed late this week and got up early this week and a lot of meetings and we made as many as we could and they were incredible. 
But physically you get tired. But the blessing of the rest is that we pray, Lord, bless my body with rest. I'm going to wake up tomorrow ten times more refreshed than my counterpart who partied all weekend and slept all day today. There's a rest. You have to understand it's a biblical concept. There's a spirit of rest. Lift your hands towards heaven. Father, I'm so grateful to walk before you with your people. I thank you for the family of God. I thank you those listening. And that our online community creates the body of believers here. And I pray today to every single person for the sound of my voice that you do what only you can do. Bring a Sabbath rest to every physical body. Let it manifest in our physical mortal bodies, in our minds. Let us be at rest and peace. It's been a physical hard week, Lord, but you've blessed us beyond our understanding. We leave this place today knowing that everything that you said, every word that you spoke will come to pass. And we praise you for it. We thank you for it. We're going to sing a new song, speak a new language of faith that says our God has manifest miracles in our life. I may not see them all, but I believe them. And I speak blessing over every person, every man, woman, and child. I speak the rest of God, the blessing of God, the health of God, the strength of God, the wealth of God. Keep us in our right mind. Keep our mind stayed upon you. Let everything that we've heard this week resonate in our spirit and mind. Let us regurgitate it over and over and over that we may continue to eat this truth. As we go, Lord, today, be with us, guide us, and lead us, and protect us. Throughout this week, Lord, remind us that our praise needs to be in front, and that we glorify your name, that we're a people of faith. Thank you for everything that you've done this week. There's so much we haven't even seen yet. But that's why we praise you, because we know that it's coming. So we glorify you. We thank you. As we go today, we go in faith and strength and joy and rest and peace, because you're a good God. We love you with all of our hearts, our minds, our soul. What a privilege and honor it is to serve you, to know you, to be with you. So we thank you for this day. We thank you for this week, and we glorify you in Christ's name. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. It's Trinity. All I can say after that is just wow. <laughs> had to address what just happened. That was, uh, God is moving. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>